The Corn School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by BASF and Pride Seeds. Hi, I'm Bernard Tobin. Welcome to the Corn School. Today I'm down in Blenheim, Ontario, catching up with Steph Mislick from Pride Seeds. How's it going? It's going good. Sun well, shining. It's, and, it's, and it's not raining. It's not raining. It's been a challenging spring, so any day we get like this is just wonderful. Well, I know. That's pretty cool. Now, today, I want to talk about foliar feeding corn through the season. Um, let's start there. I mean, you know, what are our, our objectives here, Steph? What can we achieve when we foliar feed, you know, at the appropriate time through the season? Well, we always worry about whether we're limiting yield or how we're going about limiting yield. So we know that the idea of the barrel and there's different lengths of staves, whatever's the most limiting thing on that barrel is what's going to limit our yield. Nutrients are one of them and not just in a general package. Each one individually can limit yield and the way they interact with each other and how much is there and how much is available when. So by tissue testing and foliar feeding, we're now dealing with that and trying to make sure that that is not the limiting factor in our yield. Now, here's a question for you. How often should we or could we foliar feed throughout the season? Well, you can do it probably as many times as you actually want. Um, some guys only do it once, some do it three. It, it depends. You can combine it with a pass for a herbicide or a fungicide. It doesn't have to be applied on its own. But if you need to, you can do that too. Yeah, and that's depending on you know what we're hearing from a tissue test or seeing in a mm -hmm. tissue test and what the nutrient needs are, right? Correct. Now, Steph, I want to talk about tissue testing protocols here in a second. But first of all, I want to look at a trial you did last year with Nutranalytics. You looked at a hybrid, you fed it through the season. Tell us about it. Well, I did the research at our Pride Seeds Education Center in Pancor. Um, I used the hybrid 6929G4. It is a 99 day hybrid that kind of applied to the whole trading area that I work with. So it was relevant to everyone. Um, it was Planted May 16th, came out of the ground great, had the same fertility across the entire site, which was a split application of N, as well as a dry fertilizer starter that was worked in and had a package of micros in it, um, mainly the big ones being zinc, sulfur, manganese, and calcium, um, which we all know are factor, nutrients we need to help grow a crop. From there, uh, it was tissue tested at three different timings. We did a, one at about two to three leaf, we did another one about it was V7, so about seven, eight leaf, and we did the third one at tassel. Following each of those tissue testing timings, the program, we were, the samples were submitted to NutriAg, who ran it through the Nutri Analytics program. Uh, it comes back with an algorithm calculation on what nutrients we need to apply at that time. What could be the most limiting factor? They then go in and apply those for the backpack sprayer. I mean, we're talking. 0 0.03 of an acre, so hard to agree with an with actual sprayer. Went in, applied them following each of those timings and followed it through. We did ye uh, ear counts, we did counts on kernels when we got to that timing and tried to do observations and couldn't physically see any differences, which was kind of unique. You, you'd expect to see something different, but that was not the case. And we carried it through to harvest where we waited off and got to find out the results of what happened. So Steph, tell us about what you learned from a yield perspective and uh, when it comes to ROI. Well, we have a saw yield increase. Like, that's what the end of the game is. That's what we want to see. So we got almost 14 bushel uh, across a, or 0 0.03 of an acre. And it came back with, when you take in the cost of your foliars, etc., you end up with about a $31 increase. Uh, okay, so but that's just nutrients. You didn't do a fungicide. Um, that, I mean, uh, what role, how could that play if you, and I know you're going to do that this year, right? That's right, I am going to do it this year. Uh, didn't do a fungicide last year, um, kind of just the way the timings worked out, it didn't happen. We were in a spot that had significant tar spot levels, uh, and the kernel counts, it was projected that we were going to have a 40 bushel increase. Mm -hmm. We didn't see that. So, that, you know, we talk about tar spot can do yeah. drastic measurements or changes the yield, it did that. Yeah. It only dropped it to 14. More this year, of course, you're gonna learn some more. Um, let's talk about, in general, um, I guess some other th learnings for growers or some things that you would share with growers. That, um, what about differences in, in hybrids, for example? Every hybrid will respond a little bit differently. Uh, it did play a little bit with another one, didn't have the same results as we did with A6929 G4. So it, they do respond differently at different timings. Um, I think based on whether it's a racehorse or a workhorse will dictate what it needs when. Yeah. Let's talk about um, tissue testing. From a protocol perspective, what do growers need to know, timings, and you know, how, much, um, you know, how much leaf tissue do you need to collect? 
Okay, so I followed Nutri-Ag's protocol because I was working with Nutri-Ag on it using their software. Um, so they recommended, we did three different timings. The first one was V2, V3, and it was a whole plant. So we actually dug up the plants, roots and all, and that was 20 to 30 plants that we had to do that with. So the second timing is V8 to V10. Uh, we come back at that time and we pick the newest leaf. So typically it's the top one, but it needs to be fully exposed. It can't still be inside the whorl. The last timing is coming back at tassel and we take the ear leaf, which is the one that's opposite on the opposite side of the stalk and, a, and just below the ear where the cob is developing. You're gonna learn lots more uh, this year with your trial. Uh, we're gonna see the results this winter? We are this winter, yeah. the winter circuit. You got it, you got it. Um, Steph, thanks for uh, taking some time for Corn School. I uh, look forward to hearing this story on the winter circuit. Thank you.